give me a happy marriage. That prayer cannot be answered. I'm not cursing anybody. The prayer can only be answered when you have done what you should do. God will not do. You can't ask God in prayer to do what he has already commanded you to do. When our church was still very young too, I think in 1999, we're doing evangel 98, we're doing evangelism. Then they enter into a compound. The man invited them into the inside. We divided ourselves to two. The two people that entered were senior leaders in the church. They got inside. The man said, he's an abalist. He pointed to his wall. He said, is this not your pastor? They said, yes. Why is he hanging my picture? I don't know him. I don't, I've never seen him before. But you see, you don't even know the people you have offended. Your success annoys some people. Maybe you don't know. Your failure makes some people happy. Maybe you don't know. So if you don't start engaging in spiritual, if you don't understand how to invoke, you must know how to release the anointing in a boardroom as a child of God. If you must know in the midst of negotiation, you must know how to switch to the realm of the spirit and begin to war according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Praise God. So where we read says, the weapons that we are going to use, they are not kind of weapons. They are not, I won't greet him again. Those are not, that's not, that's a kind of weapon. The weapons that will give us victory, they don't have anything to do with physical. He said, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Three major things he mentioned in that scripture. He said, number one, he said, for the weapons of our warfare are not kind of, but they are mighty through God for pulling down what? Strongholds. The next one again, verse 5. Casting down from old King James. Casting down imaginations. Strongholds. Imaginations. And bringing into captivity every thought. These three things are mind things. Where does imagination stay? In our mind. Where does thought live? In our mind. What about strongholds? In our mind. So the battleground is not really your office, it's your mind. The battleground is not your office, it's your mind. Your mind. Everybody say my mind. So the number one enemy on the list is what? Strongholds. Not witches. Not wizard. I'm not saying witches and wizards too are not enemy, but they are not, they are not on top of the list. On top of the list of your fight, on top of the list of your opposition, is not your enemy, is not witches and wizards. They too are part of the list, but they don't top the list. Your thoughts, your imaginations, your strongholds, they take the top list on the list. I know this is not a good news for many of us because Africans don't like the truth. Africans would rather listen to people who tell you your major enemy is uh, your stepmother, your grandfather, the junior brother of your sister, <laughs> of your husband. I know this is not a good news because we don't like to be pointed to, but you are the number one suspect when, they, when you face an attack. Yoruba people speak some wise things. Africans have some wise words. He said when you point an accusing finger to people, the remaining four points at you. You know why you have been fighting and you've not won? You are not fighting the top rank enemy. You are fighting the less rank enemy. You've been engaging in battle. There's no doubt about it. Is that you have been engaging in a wrong way or you have been engaging the low ranks ones? And and those captains who gives command to the low ranks, they are there enjoying AC inside the hall. You are the number one suspect in every attack you face. For many of us, this is not a good news. Many of us, we want to hear, oh, it is Mr. Badamosi, it is. We like, African likes those kind of things a lot. And that's why Africa is still the poorest country, continent in the world. Despite all the witches and wizards we fight. We fight witches and wizards in this part of the world more than any continent. 
we are more concerned about which is and wizard more than any continent in the world. Yet we are the poorest. So we've not been fighting, we've not been fighting the real fight. Our approach is wrong. You know why our approach is wrong? Because we leave the top rank enemy untouched. I'm not saying we should not go after, we, I'm not saying we should not break the power of witches and wizards, but I'm saying that there are some powers inside you that are stronger than them, and that's the power of your thoughts, the power of your stronghold, the power of your imagination. Praise God. This is the root of every battle in life. If you can master your imagination and your thoughts and your strongholds, you can keep all those witches and wizards under check. Because they cannot even operate until they, those are the materials they use. Hmm? Those are their ammunitions. Satan's greatest ammunitions are strongholds, imaginations, and thoughts. And please, not somebody else's thought, your thought. Not somebody else's imagination, your imagination. Not somebody else's stronghold, your stronghold. If you look at it, it is your own. What you think about me cannot harm me. It's what I think about myself that can harm me. What you imagine for me cannot do anything for me. It is what I imagine for myself. Did you get this? Say, I don't like the way they think about me in that office. They can't think anything they like to think. As long as I don't think their kind of thought. They can think destruction for me. God says, I, think, I don't think evil about you. Abby? Jeremiah 29 verse 11 said, There is a thought that I think towards you, the thoughts of good, not of what? Evil. So if I think like God thinks about me, witches and wizards, if they like, let them think whatever they want to think is their cup of tea. So stop bothering yourself about what people are saying or thinking about you. You are too bothered about what they are thinking about you. How do they see me? Do they like me? You are even asking all your close friends, do they like me in that office? They don't need to. That should be, I mean, it's good for them to like you, but I'm saying that that should be top on your priority. If you are, if you are, if you are, if you are angry, and you are, and you are, and you are, and you are aggressive, that somebody is thinking evil thoughts about you. What about those evil thoughts you think about yourself? Praise God. This is not someone else's thought. Oh. In this scripture, he's talking about your thought. I don't think he can make it. That is an opinion. That is what? That's just an opinion. Anybody can have opinion. I don't think he can make it. I don't think he's good enough to make it. She's not talented. He's faking it. Those are opinions, Abby. Those are just opinions. Are you two thinking you are not talented? Are you two thinking you are faking it? That's what really matters. Because the moment you join the enemy to think what they think about you, you give them you give them chance to operate in your life. Poverty wants to come in. Are you thinking poverty? Or you are thinking prosperity? Sin wants to come in. Are you thinking righteousness or you are thinking sin? What you think is who you are. Proverbs 23, verse 7 confirms that so as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. He says, So as people think about a man. The whole world can think whatever they want to think. Is that what you are thinking about yourself? So, you need to understand that it's not about... Now, let's read James 4, 1 quickly. James chapter 4, verse 1 from the Amplified and the New Living Translation. James 4, 1 from NLT and Amplified. What is causing the quarrel? What is causing the quarrels and fight among you? Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? Where is that war? There is war within. Many of us, there is war within us. We come to church on Sunday and pray for prosperity. But Monday to Saturday, we think poverty. We imagine poverty. We, we come to church on Sunday morning, we pray for long life. But Monday to Saturday, we're thinking death. We're imagining caskets. Let's have that scripture again. From the, he said, 
What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from evil desires at war within you? Let's read from the Amplified. What leads to strife, discord, and how do conflict, quarrels, and fighting originate among you? Do they not arise from your sexual and um, sensual desires that are ever warring in your bodily members? Wise people say, if the enemy within cannot harm us, the enemy without can do us no harm. The, they even said that the insect that is eating up the vegetable is not far from the vegetable, it's under the vegetable. The day you master your imagination, your thoughts dimension, your stronghold, the day you put them to check, that's the day you are in charge. That's the day you actually took control of your life. And this is the day. Oh, you didn't say man there. Today is the day. Let me show you another scripture. First Peter 2 11. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Quickly. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Glory to God. Beloved, I've told you anytime you see brethren, beloved, brothers and sisters, he's talking to believers. So I implore you as alien and strangers and exile in the world to abstain from sensual urges, the evil desire, the passion of the flesh, your lower nature that wages war against the soul. You will win the war going on within you. You will win from today the war going on inside you. That contest for a brighter future going on, you will win that contest. Satan is waging war in our minds. He's suggesting to the man, walk out of the marriage, leave the woman. That's the war. Every war, everything you see outside starts from inside. One young man, he has first class. He got a good job from... Uh, in, uh, um, from a, a multinational company at his 20s. He got the job at 20s. He has bought a house because they, were, they paid them in a million or in dollars. By the time he converts, it's in millions of naira every month. He was doing well, very brilliant. He told me the story by himself. The time I met him, he was trekking everywhere. He looked started. He was living in one room with his wife and children. That house looks like a barrack, very congested. Our church was still small then, so we went for a visit, and I saw, I said, what? And that day, he told me his story. How he was doing well. He had no problem. But one day, he sat in his office. He said he just took a piece of paper and wrote his resignation letter, without even being in his sense. He said he wrote the letter. He said he didn't even know what he was doing that day. He submitted it. The other guy asked him, like, are you sure? Do you know what, what you want to do? He said, oh, God, leave me alone. That's what I want to do. He said it was when he got home and the next day, he now came to his senses that he wanted to go to work and something told him, you have a resign. He now said, why did I resign? Am I stupid? So he started suffering. Because now to get that job became difficult because he has advanced in age. And he said, Pastor, till today I cannot explain why I resigned. It was a battle that he couldn't win in the inside of him. Every battle going on in your mind right now, I decree supernatural interventions. This morning, you will cast down all evil imaginations. You will put to captivity every evil thoughts. You will pull down every stronghold in your mind. <laughs> 